So lately I've been reading a lot about Thomas Ligotti. Um, he is a author. Duh. Um, <laughs> uh, okay, obviously I'm not good at making videos, but whatever. Um, basically I've been reading a lot of Thomas Ligotti lately, and he is a horror writer that is being compared all the time to the HP Lovecraft, so that's how I got to know about him. And so far, I'm impressed enough to say that he's in my top 5 authors, no doubt. Even though I just started reading him about maybe 2 months ago, I've already picked up 3 of his books, and while I'm impressed enough, I need to make this video just to give a, a rough idea of what he's about, because when I search for Thomas Ligotti videos, not many came up, you know? So I don't think he's getting enough um, promotion, I suppose, as a writer. And I think that's what needs to happen. So this isn't scripted or anything. I'm not making a formal video. This is just me uh, talking about what I've read so far. Maybe it's a good video, maybe not. But hey, booktubers do that all the time, right? Okay, first of all, who is Thomas Bogotti? Um, in short, he's an American writer. He's not dead yet. He's what uh, S.T. Joshi called a psychological horror writer. And that is pretty much true. It's not like horror in the sense of, you know, Clive Barker or someone like that. No. He is, uh, everything that Ligotti writes is aimed towards, uh, hey, wow, that made you think. That kind of writing. That kind of horror. Um, as a person, he's a bit of a reclusive character. He is not one that's out in the limelight. He is not one who's out there giving tons of interviews and photo shoots and stuff like that, even though he has conjured enough fame and no, no, notoriety about himself already to justify all that but no he's he's a very reclusive character and a bit of a broken character i must say maybe maybe that's a biased thing to say or the wrong thing to say or maybe that's a bit cruel to say that he's broken but that's kind of the impression i'm getting and i'm judging from that feeling i also read up on wikipedia about him just to have a rough idea of who he was and it described him as having a profoundly nihilistic and pessimistic worldview and also described him as having chronic anxiety and uh, there was some disorder, anhedonia. Yeah, yeah, it was anhedonia, and that's like a disorder that makes you incapable of enjoying things which are normally enjoyed by people. I don't know if that's true. Hey, it's Wikipedia. It could be bullshit, right? But that's who he is, and that sort of character of who he is definitely bleeds into um, his writing. You know, so. You have to take the art with the artist in this case. I think it would be a lot easier if I just read some of the descriptions of his works and what they're about. Uh, so basically, in this book, this is the first book I have, Teatro Grotesco. Um, I don't know if that's Spanish, but it sounds like Spanish. I'm betting it's Spanish. But here they basically describe his works as portraying characters that are outside of anything that might be called normal life, depicting strange locales far off the beaten track and rendering a grim vision of human existence as a perpetual nightmare. Well, okay, that's cheerful enough, right? Just by entering his unique world where odd little towns and dark sectors are peopled with clowns and fierce puppets, and where tormented individuals and blackly comical eccentrics play out their doom, is to risk your own vision of the world. Yeah, something to read before bed, right? Second book that I own. Uh, would be this one. This is an anthology of his works. By the way, I should have mentioned this earlier, but he's a short story writer, so. But in this one, this is his first sort of publication, uh, Grim Scribe and Songs of a Dead Dreamer. There are two separate books rolled into one. One was published in the 80s, one in the 90s, but this is the one when you search for on Amazon or Book Depository, this is going to be the first one that comes up. In Decaying Cities, and lurid dreamscapes tormented by the lunatic pageantry of masks, puppets, and obscure ritual. Ligotti's works lay bare the sickening madness of the human condition. Yeah. The third book that I own is actually not a short story book. It is a philosophical piece. The Conspiracy Against the Human Race. This is actually more like a textbook for uh, a, philo a philosophical class or a philosophy class, or however you want to say it. Basically, in this book, he presents his outlook on life, which is, eh, you know, don't take this, don't read this if you have depressive issues or something like that. But basically, he outlines the idea that, is life worth living? Should we be grateful for being alive? 
and basically says no. Okay, so what makes Logati cool? What what makes him likable as a character, as a writer? Uh, in no particular order. Uh, let's start with the clowns. Well, you know, Lovecraft has tentacles and he has these deep ones and all the, the fish things. And Poe, he has his ravens and his cats. Okay, Lugati, he has his puppets. He has his clowns, masks, marionettes, mimes, mannequins, things like that. That is his thing. Okay, and in most of his stories, he integrates them somehow. And it's all very symbolic, you know. Obviously, people are freaked out by clowns enough. I mean, if you look at Hollywood now, there's so many films that feature clowns and puppets and toys coming to life. And obviously, there's something there inherent that freaks people the fuck out, you know. I mean, masks, for example, if you look at the psychology behind you put on a mask, you become a different person. And what about dolls and shit like that? They're created by us. But they're dead. But they look like they could be alive. But what if they did come alive? You know, in the in the films, they usually just rely on, oh wow, that, that clown looks fucked up. I better stay away from that clown. Uh, the puppet, it's come to life. Or the clown has a knife. Uh, with Lugati, he takes a more philosophical approach on everything. It's not direct in your face. This is a well matured, um, <laughs> well matured fear that he develops using clowns and puppets and mimes and shit. So that I really liked. I find that very interesting. If that's your thing, that alone should justify you buying some of his books. I like that Lugati shares a lot of similarities with Lovecraft but with a lot more diversity. For example, you can open up a Lovecraft story and 80% of the time, sorry Howard, but it's true, 80% of the time you can kind of guess what's coming. You know, you have A, the protagonist, a a guy from New England area, uh, has an academic background, well educated, and he discovers something and he either goes insane or he dies. But with Lugotti, he, he changes things up a lot more. The, he has a lot of towns that he creates and these eerie towns and stuff, but he also has diversity of characters, you know, it's not just academic, academic men from uh, New England. I mean, he has characters who are, are leading the story. He's had um, children, he's had you know, poor people, he's had un uneducated people, just everyday people. Uh, he's had magicians, he's had legit psychopaths that are in jail, he's had doctors. He shares similar ideas with Lovecraft and that the themes he wants to present, but he has a lot more diversity. So sometimes it's nice to have a change. You know? Even if you have the same meal and it's your favorite meal, you have that every day, uh, it gets a bit tiring, right? Another thing I like about Lugati is his themes. The inherent theme is that you have the world that we know and live in and then just underneath there's some unpleasantness sort of rubbing against the skin. And if you peel back the skin, you see that unpleasantness and then that sort of either leads to madness or an altering of your worldview. I mean, didn't that book say here somewhere to enter these worlds is to risk your own vision of the world? So basically, he, in each of his stories, he tries to highlight that philosophical theme that there's something malignant about being alive. You know, that is what his thing is. And I think he does it extremely well. That's what I really like about him as well. I like his change of writing style. His writing styles vary so much. It's not always just the same style that he employs for all of his works. Some of his works he presents, for example, in diary entries, sort of like if you ever read Dracula, in that sort of sense. Um, he has another um, story that stood out to me, it kind of annoyed me, the writing style, but at least it was a bit varied. In one story he has here called the Chimist, it's like Chemist, but he took out the E and put in a Y, so is that Chimist? I don't know. Uh, but for example, here he writes everything in just from the protagonist, the main protagonist is giving one long dialogue, not dialogue, monologue, but the character is also interacting with other people doing different things. So for example, um, the opening passage goes, Hello miss, why yes, as a matter of fact, I am looking for some company this evening. So here he says, hello miss. So you would expect that the person, in this case it was a prostitute, says hello back. And then he says, why yes, as a matter of fact, so she's asking, were you looking for some company tonight? You know, it's like that. 
So the whole story is just, this is from that perspective. He just, he is just talking, 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 talking. It's kind of annoying, but at least it's something fresh. So that's why I really like him. He alters things up every now and then. And another small thing I really liked about Lugotti that made him stand out to me was the names he gives his characters. He doesn't just go with like, you know, random stuff, generic names or, you know, wholly acceptable names. Like if you saw this name written down, you think, oh, okay, yeah, that's a legit person. Like uh, Henry Anthony Wilcox, that's a normal name, right? Okay, but he, he comes up with these odd names for his characters. Uh, I wrote down a list of some of them. Um, Nos, Dr. Monk, Dr. Thos, Mr. Veach, Plom, and Quizzer. So, I mean, he, he makes up these names, and it's clear that like, these characters are just used to uh, forward the plot, you know, to represent something. So he's like, ah, oh, fuck it. I don't care who needs another Andrew or Maria, right? Just this one's Plom, this one's Quizzer, you're Dr. Thos. This is a small thing, but I kind of like. Where is the Lovecraft connection? The Lagotti Lovecraft connection? Uh, he is paired with Lovecraft all the fucking time. All the time, he is always compared to Lovecraft and put on the same level. You know? I'm not, an, I'm not like a, a Lovecraft fanboy that's offended that someone, how dare you compare him to my hero? Blah blah blah. No, L Lagotti has earned that right, I think. But I just don't see the connection on all three of these books that I own. Lovecraft's name appears somewhere, either in the front or the back. Influenced by the strange terrors of Lovecraft and Poe. If you look on the inside, there is also further mention of Lovecraft in the... What do you call that thing? That's like the front, but it's not a blurb. Blurbs are the back, right? Well, the front blurb. Jesus, I'm, ed I'm uneducated, so excuse me. Uh, following a tradition established by Edgar Allan Poe and perpetuated by H.P. Lovecraft. In the front of this book, uh, it says here, An accomplished conjurer of nightmares in the tradition of H.P. Lovecraft. Thomas Ligotti is one of the most original and remarkable figures in horror literature since H.P. Lovecraft. And even in the philosophical book, the one that's not a short story, really. In this genre, he has been classed with Edgar Allan Poe and H.P. Lovecraft. My impressions, like I've read 70% of both books, I've read all of Lovecraft. And while I see there's some underlying themes they share, um, no, you know, if you wanted to make like a Venn diagram, like, one of those Venn things, how do you say it? Like, is that a Venn? It would, the connection would be quite small, that's just my opinion. I'm sure Logotti is actually quite flattered by this because Logotti is actually a Lovecraft fan himself. A number of his short stories, there are some Lovecraft references and there's actually an outright dedication to Lovecraft. Uh, in the short story, The Sect of the Idiot, it actually starts with an opening from the Necronomicon, the primal chaos, lord of all, the blind idiot god, Azathoth. And the whole story is basically a Lovecraftian story. It's a, a pastiche, is that right? the right word? This is Thomas Lugotti's attempt, successful attempt, attempt to write a Lovecraftian story. There's a second story in this book, uh, Le Fleur. Mm, that's French. The flowers, right? There is an outright direct uh, nod to At the Mountains of Madness. So basically in the story, you've got this uh, character and he's trying to get laid. <laughs> you know, basically, there's the diversity. You know, you wouldn't have a Lovecraftian story where the character is trying to get laid. But yeah, basically, he's trying to get laid. He's a weird artist, and he's created an elder thing statue. And he brings this girl back to his apartment, and she's like, "What the hell is this thing?" And he gets all embarrassed about it because he's actually part of a cult, and he's trying to keep it secret. Further on in that same story, there's this passage where he actually gets drunk and he reads what is obviously at the mountains of madness she abandoned me i got very drunk on a liquor tasting of flowers from open fields or so it seemed also took this opportunity to reread a story about some men who visit the white waste regions of a polar wonderland i don't expect to dream tonight having already sated myself with this, fant uh, this arctic fantasy and finally there's one more reference that kind of highlights just how much he loves uh, lovecraft the Last Feast of Harlequin, uh, which is one of the best stories in, this, in the book, um, at the end actually says, to the memory of H.P. Lovecraft. So what are the kinds of stories he writes? You have one called The Frolic, which is basically about this doctor who's trying to treat this Joker-esque type um, serial killer who may or may not have psychic uh, supernatural powers. A story called The Troubles of Dr. Thos, which is about this artist's reclusive sketcher He's living in a city, uh, through his window he overhears the mention of a Dr. Thos who 
who can cure people with ailments, but it's kind of implied that Dr. Thos is a mythical figure who might not really exist, so he goes out and then he sort of encounters the doctor and whether or not he gets cured, that's for you to decide. There is also the sect of the idiot, which is, the, you know, that's his pastiche to Lovecraft. And that is basically, this guy goes into a town. The town is all very beautiful. It fascinates him. He meets a weird guy. He falls asleep. He has some dreams. He wakes up and then everything seems different. And it basically follows like the footsteps of Dagon or something like that. It's really a good story. Then you have others one other ones like The Last Feast of Harlequin, which is which has the theme of this the clowns again, right? So you have like this anthropologist, he goes into a town called Miracle and there he tries to integrate with the clowns because they have like this festival for clowns and then he dresses up as a clown, he interacts with the people but Something seems off, like he breaks a faux pas and then suddenly it's like the Twilight Zone or some shit. And there was another story I really liked uh, called The Spectacles in the Drawer. It's about this, this guy who collects weird artifacts and he has his friend who's like a bit slow, a bit stupid. And his friend comes over and this guy, the collector, he gives his friend's box. But inside this box are these spectacles which enable you to see further than beyond. Uh, so it kind of follows, it's similar to From Beyond from Lovecraft. Yeah, that, these are just like amazing stories, you know. Each story are, each, each story is about 20 pages, 15 pages, some more or less. But each story is unique in its own right and I really, really recommend it. So of these three books, I would say start with this one. This is the best one to go for right now. Uh, it's probably the most easiest one to find as well. So yeah, if you're a Lovecraftian, pick it up. Pick up a Lugotti. I'm I'm gonna say 80% of the time of the time you're gonna love his stories. Some of them might just be like eh. But personally for me, I like everything he's written so far. Uh, this is my rough idea of what Lugati is about. It's, it's not like a formal video or anything. But as I go on, maybe I'll do a proper review. Um, yeah. Cheers. Later. <laughs>